together in 1969. We formed the band in Flint, Michigan, uh, and uh, you know we've been touring off and on. You know there were a couple of couple of time periods where we didn't tour for a number of years, but uh, we've been touring now. You know with, with the band, uh, you know going up on uh, 50 years, and uh, and it's just been uh, it's been a great run, a great ride, uh, and we're still going. Now, as a founding member of Grand Funk Railroad, talk to me about some of the different ups and downs that you guys have had, some of the different trials and tribulations that Grand Funk has had over this 50 years. Well, there's been tons of, tons of down, down stuff, and, uh, you know, I mean, that, that stuff didn't get all the, all the publicity. You know, I, I'd rather talk about, you know, shelling out, uh, or selling out Shea Stadium Fest. Oh, yeah, Eagles, yeah. Playing in, different, playing in different venues all over the world, including uh, baseball stadiums in Tokyo and, uh, and Osaka. Uh, you know, so it, it's, you know, it's been an amazing career. You know, uh, I forget how many platinum albums, 13 platinum albums, I think, you know, and uh, five gold singles. And uh, so it, it's, you know, just an amazing career. And to be able to be uh, still playing here, I'm, I'm 71 years old now, and, and to be able to play and do what I love, uh, uh, you know, with with my grandkids, you know, being able to see me occasionally, uh, that that's a, it's truly I'm blessed. I'm truly blessed. Now l- l- let's talk a little bit about you. You mentioned the the sellout Shea Stadium. Uh, this is an incredible moment. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that experience. Well, you know, I mean, it was like a rock and roll fantasy. You know, flying in over over Shea Stadium with you know all of these umpteen thousand people down there waiting to see Mark Down and Mel. Uh, you know, and and we were just kids, you know, 19 years old at the time, and here we are, uh, you know, flying in, and, and Humble Pie was on stage at the time, and uh, you know, it was it was just an inc- incredible experience. It was really a rock and roll fantasy. Now, Grand Funk Railroad, they have uh, been selling out arenas uh, for decades now. Uh, why do you think that the Grand Funk Railroad music has endured as well as it has? Well, you know, back at the time when we were making music, it, it was very, you know, very simplistic. I thought, you know, I mean, the recordings were, you know, far more simplistic than they are today, and uh, and you you really relied on the performance and the song, you know, and get a bunch of guys together, and you're all in the studio, and you're having a good time, and and you try to capture that on a recording, and I think that's what we did, and and I think that's what kind of plays to people when they hear these recordings is is that they're just honest rock and roll. We have got Don with us today from Grand Funk Railroad, and uh, you, you guys have, have put together a great catalog of music. Uh, I, I know that we, we've interviewed some different musicians in the past. Uh, a lot of you guys, uh, you know, get out there and, and or keep doing your thing. Uh, what, what are some of the, I guess, easy parts of being around for so long and, and endure the music enduring as long as it has? Well, you know, I mean, it's <laughs> it's just it, it's just like I said, it's amazing to get up on stage and start singing songs, and you have four generations of people that know the words to your songs, you know. And, and I love to see the the eyes light up and and the smiles come on people's faces when we start some kind of wonderful, or I'm your captain, closer to home, or we're an American band, and and you see parents and uh, and grandparents and kids and grandkids, and they're all singing along to your song. It's yeah, you know, it's truly an amazing uh, experience. We have got uh, Don with us today from Grand Funk Railroad, and they're going to be live. They're they're on tour right now. Uh, how did how do you how do you guys? <laughs> oh man, I sneezed right there. Sorry about that, Don. Um, so so Grand Funk, how has how has Grand Funk Railroad been able to endure? as long as you guys have because like you mentioned selling out Shea Stadium selling out uh, stadiums in Japan things like this that there are a lot of modern day artists that you know that they've got they've got the machine basically behind them and they can't sell out Shea Stadium they can't sell out Japanese uh events things like this well i don't think there's any key to, to, to success or any necessary you know thing i mean a lot of it is luck uh, and a lot of it is just hard work, you know. So you put in a lot of hard work and dedication, and, and you, you give it everything you can. You 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 cover the factors and the bases that you know you can take care of, and the rest of it is you know what whatever is going to happen is is going to happen. You know, there's there's really nothing you can do about those kind of things. And uh, and so yes, I think anybody that that becomes successful, uh, you know, there's a certain luck factor involved. 
Grand Funk Railroad with us today. Now, of course, they are originating from uh, Flint, Michigan in 1969. Uh, Top-selling American rock group of the 70s and uh, just dominating, dominating the 70s and into the 80s. Uh, they have toured the world, selling out U.S., Canada, Europe, Japan, South America. Uh, what, what, what do the folks in South America think of Grand Funk? I, 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 I think that's fascinating that uh, the folks in South America are big Grand Funk Railroad fans. Well, I think there's there's fans of, of American rock and roll all over the world, you know. I mean, and uh, you know, as well as British rock and roll, you know, and other, other forms of, of rock. But you know, certainly, uh, you know, America, American uh, music and American clothing and American this and American that is very uh, very popular all over the world, you know. So yes, uh, they want they love to have a piece of it. You know, they don't experience the same kind of music in their own in their own countries, you know. So uh, th this is the place that they come to get it. We have got the fantastic uh, Grand Funk Railroad with us today. Don joins us here in a broadcast, and uh, so what attracted you to music originally? When 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 you when you before Grand Funk Railroad and everything, what attracted you particularly to music? Well, as a little kid, I remember seeing Ed, uh, on the Ed Sullivan Show. I saw uh, Elvis Presley sing "Blue Suede Shoes," and uh, and I started doing an impersonation of, of Elvis doing "Blue Suede Shoes." Uh, and my dad used to take me to the local bar and put me up on the tabletop and uh, go to the jukebox and put a nickel in and and, uh, and play "Blue Suede Shoes," and I would do my impersonation. And right then, I was uh, hit by the rock and roll bug. And so, you know, I, I always wanted to, to be involved in rock and roll in one, one way, shape, or form or another. And uh, that carried through in, into my teens, and, uh, and I put my first band together when I was 13 years old. Uh, and everything was always about rock. I think that's fantastic. We have got Don with us today from Grand Funk Railroad. Joins us live here on the telephone. They are uh, on tour, 50 Years of Funk, which is absolutely amazing. And uh, Grand, Grand Funk Railroad laid the groundwork for such bands as Foreigner, Journey, Van Halen, Bon Jovi, as, as well as many others. And uh, Don joins us today here on the telephone. Uh, I'm amazed at the fact that you guys had 19 charted singles, 8 top 40 hits, 2 number 1 singles. That is an impressive, impressive resume, my man. Well, absolutely, you know, and uh, it's like, you know, those are records, too, you know, I mean, you don't have records anymore, uh, you know, everything is downloads and streaming, and so that all of that kind of that kind of stuff has changed, uh, even the top 40 format, I don't think it exists anymore, does it, you know? I mean, not really, <laughs> not really. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I mean, it's, yeah, it, it, you know, it's all changed now, so, you know, I, and I miss those, I miss those things, you know, I think that, I think it was a great thing, you know, that, uh, but you know things change and uh, people move on and uh, uh, and, uh, and we and we're still touring 50 years later. So there you go. I think it's amazing. Don joins us today here on the telephone talking about Grand Funk Railroad. They are out on tour and uh, just doing some amazing, amazing things. Uh, where where do you guys like to play? Because I, I you guys sell out everywhere you go. Uh, but what 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 are what are some some interesting places that you like to play either in the U.S. or Canada or Europe or what have you? Well, you know, I, we we stick pretty much to the United States. You know, we get up into Canada a couple of times a year, uh, but mostly in the United States. And and I love playing any place around. You know, I mean, some of my favorite scenery is out in Arizona, uh, up into Utah and those those kind of areas. I, lo I love visiting those places just for the scenery. But uh, you know, we were up in upstate New York just a few weeks ago. Uh, right along the St. Lawrence Seaway, and man, just the, the, the beautiful scenery and just a beautiful weather up there and uh, this time of year. So, you know, it, 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 every part of the country has something special about it. Yes, it is It is fantastic. We're talking with Don today from Grand Funk Railroad, and uh, they, are, they are on tour, 50 Years of Funk. It is absolutely amazing that the fact that they have been able to uh, stand the test of time with, as he mentioned earlier, all this, all this streaming and, and nonsense with the downloads and everything. There's no records anymore. Um, I want to talk a little bit about that. Uh, do you think the music industry is better off for just downloadable songs instead of albums and records like like it was back in the day or, or where do you come down on that my man well you know it, it's a it's 
certainly is a big uh, chunk out of the, the uh, out of the pocketbook of all of the artists and all of the uh, the people out there, the songwriters and the publishers and so forth and so on. Because uh, you know, the, there is no physical product being sold anymore. Everything is streams and downloads, and and the royalty rate is you know greatly, greatly, greatly reduced. Uh, you know, for for those kind of things. So you know, it's uh, the, all of that's different. I'm, I don't think that the recording business is is healthy anymore uh, as it was when we we came up i'm certainly very fortunate to have come up in a time period when it was a very healthy business and a very healthy industry um so it, it certainly has all changed uh, i think music now has become you know sort of disposable where uh, you know people just kind of look at it as a piece of candy they put it in their mouth they uh, take a few bites and it's gone and that that's that'd be that's about the end of it so yes uh, when we came up you know music was a, a part of the culture uh part of everyone's life you know it was the uh it was the movie soundtrack to everybody's life, you know, and I, I don't think that really necessarily holds true anymore. We have got Don with us today from Grand Funk Railroad. He joins us live here on the telephone. And uh, your song, We're an American Band, <laughs> this thing is played everywhere and in everything. Uh, w when you guys sat down and, and wrote that and put that whole thing together, uh, did you think that it would be as round, uh, around as long as it has been well no i mean I, I you know when i first came up with the song i, I remember presenting it to the band and, and everybody loved it you know and it was like I, really you guys like that and then uh, you know the first time we we finished recording it in the studio and a bunch of people from Capitol records were there and they listened to it and they were like jumping up and down and i and i, I said do you, you really like that do you really you know it was it was one of those kind of things you know you can't kind of see it you know for what it is I do remember, though, the very first time I heard it on the radio in my car is when it hit me that it sounded like a hit record. You know, it just yeah. had it. Just had it. You know, it, it, one of those things, you know, and uh, and I still think it does. You know, when it comes on with that cowbell and that drum intro and, you know, just the opening chords, it's just like, wow, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. We have got Don with us today from Grand Funk Railroad, and uh, they are creating a Basically, a new chapter in the legacy of Grand Funk Railroad. 25,000 people at the Molson Canal Series concert outside of Buffalo. 20,000 in Albany, New York. 20,000 fans to downtown Orlando. Uh, they've got a greatest hits package out there that includes a bonus DVD of rare concert footage. Uh, you guys had a 2018 tour, which is a huge success. And, of course, the 2019 tour is uh, absolutely off and running. Uh where, where do you think Grand Funk uh, lines up in, in the history of great bands? Well, I would say we're, we're one of them. You know, we're right in there with everybody else, and, uh, and, and I certainly think we, uh, we certainly laid the way for a lot of people, and, uh, and they, they came after us. And so, uh, you know, I, I think those are all great, uh, great benchmarks for us. Fantastic. Well, uh, well, Don, I appreciate you making time for us today. Thanks for coming on and uh, talking about the big tour and talking about Grand Funk Railroad. It was a truly a pleasure and an honor, my friend. Thanks for doing this. Well, thank you, James. Thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Don. All right, man. Thanks. Appreciate it, brother. There he goes. Don from Grand Funk Railroad. We're an American band. I love that tune. And uh, we have got more coming up on the other side. This is the World Famous. Chicky Jaguar.